I was reading the other day, um, and I believe it was the first time I read kind of this idea was from N.T. Wright, and he presented a few kind of core questions. And I think for our conversation, it might be helpful Mm -hmm. to start with these kind of core questions that uh, I think if we stripped it down and got to the foundation that all of us are really kind of struggling with, you know, Um, and really the way we think about these questions, the way we answer these questions are going to determine uh, really the actions that we make and the um, the decisions that we make moving forward. So here are kind of these three fundamental questions. The first question is like, who are we? You know, like, have you ever thought about that? Like got up in the morning, you're just like, like, who actually am I <laughs> right um, now? You know, only when I'm like, in my most ex- <laughs> like existential yeah. crisis moment. Right, you right. Know? Yeah. So it's like, okay, who, am who I? are what we? What is life? Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So like, okay, who are we? Um, the, the next thing is like, why are we here? Hmm. You know? Um, why? Like that, that big, like, so what am I supposed to do? Like, why am I here? And so if we know who, like, who are we? Why are we here? Then the next question is very practical. Um, so what do we do about it? Hmm. You know? Uh, and so one of the things about the Bible, about the, the scriptures that I think is kind of important for us to frame this conversation is that the Bible is moving in three primary movements. Uh, and so here's kind of the the three categories in the movements. And it actually helps us understand who we are, why we're here and what we're supposed to do. Um, the first movement is that God is a good God. So he creates good things. So you have creation and, and specifically the adjective in front of creation is good creation. And then you have the reality of sin and sin breaks apart God's good creation. And so the second movement is uh, the technical phrase would be like decreation or or, uh, uncreation, that things that were good start to break apart. But here's the deal. God remains good even in the midst of the presence of sin. And a good God is just going to sit and allow all these good things that he made to break apart. Mm -hmm. So he uh, steps into creation and he provides a way for all the things that are uh, broken apart to be put back together the way that he intended for it to be. So the last movement is recreation or new creation. Uh, And one of the things that happens in this movement is from all the things that are good to all the things that are broken um, is that in the midst of this brokenness, which is really what we're in right now, the post-Genesis 3 reality, the the word or the phrase or the image that the Bible uses to describe this state of being, which I want to be so clear, is not intended to be forever. It is a right now. There is an end in sight. And so we have to deal with that intention. The image is the image of exile. The image is the image of wilderness, you know, and just as a, as a way to describe this, Eden is on a mountain. The mountains were the place where God and man met. Well, when Adam and Eve sin, they're sent out of the mountain mm. and they have to leave the Garden of Eden. Now, if you're on top of a mountain and you have to leave the Garden of Eden, well, where are you going? Down. Mm. And, and so the first image of Adam and Eve leaving is actually an image of exile. They're going into the wilderness. They're they're going into the reality of separation from God. And yet something that's kind of fascinating is that um, God is persistent to actually go into the wilderness with Adam and Eve and with us today uh, because he cares about us and he loves us. Mm. Wow. That's like a really, it's really powerful. It's image. really powerful. As we think through these three questions, is there anything else that you want to add to the why are we here or what are we here for, Joel? Yeah, I mean, the the why are we here and the what are we here for um, is really this idea of Second Corinthians chapter five. Um, Paul has talked to the church in Corinth, and he says, um, "Hey, you and I are ambassadors of Christ." Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, and and the language is so powerful. It's um, so that Christ can make His appeal in and through us. Mm-hmm. So if Christ is making his, making his appeal in and through us, then the next question is like, okay, so what do we do about this, right? So we know who we are, we know what we're here for, and now the question is, what do we do about it? And, and then it's like, oh, um, how do you and I make clear the presence of God in our lives, in the spaces that we're in, you know, mm-hmm. in um, in our work, in our family, uh, when we're in the car rider line waiting to pick up our kids and, mm-hmm. and life is chaotic and messy. Mm-hmm. My family's going on vacation tomorrow and I'm already stressed out, y'all. <laughs> I'm already stressed out. Are you specifically out. stressed about the packing, the car ride? 
getting there. And getting yeah. more stress as you just described. <laughs> all like, oh. of the things that 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 you're like, yes, you're like, oh yes, wait, I had to thought about all of the above. <laughs> all of the above <laughs> okay. circled the whole the whole thing. Okay. And so like here's the question. Well but you're like, I'm going on vacation. Like why should I be Well here this this is a side tangent. I'm pretty convinced that the concept of vacation only makes sense for children. Um mm-hmm. for the rest of us as adults or really, adults without children. Or yeah, maybe. But even, yeah, I mean, that's like true Victoria well. and I. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, like, because my vacation is basically making sure my children are on vacation while I take uh, care of them and mm-hmm. they have a great time. And see, um, I would call that a trip. I feel like yeah. trips and vacations are two different things. Yeah, you're going on a trip. Yeah, yeah I'm going, going on a trip. On a trip. That's my a good children are going on a vacation. vacation yes. But you are going on a trip. And I yeah, that's and my a good wife perspective are professional for yeah. chauffeurs for my children as they're going on their vacation. Activity planners. On a trip. Yeah. No, okay, so they're they're professional okay. activity But planner. here's a really important question for me that I need to think about that Brent and I will talk about is, okay, how do we show Jesus to our kids? Mm-hmm. Like, like very transparently. When... An hour and 15 minutes goes in. Mm. And I know the first noise I'm going to hear from the back because the kids have all gone to the bathroom. We know, like, we're pro parents. We know that the first <laughs> thing that we do before we do a road trip is all the kids go to the bathroom. And that should give us a good three hours at least before the first stop. And then I can, and I already know who it is. And, and my son, I love you if you're hearing this, Luke, <laughs> like little Lukey Bear. He'll be like, and here's what I actually think is happening. I actually think his two older brothers are putting him up to it because mm, they think like, that he won't get in have trouble. To be the one. Yes. Yeah. And he'll say, hey, dad. He's the ambassador he of, is the, of the car. <laughs> That needs yeah. yeah. And it's like when I'm annoyed and I'm frustrated, yeah. I'm like, you know better. How in that moment do I show the kindness and the compassion and the mercy of Jesus even to my children who really are, are throwing me all kinds of out of out of who are just gonna want to make a bathroom stop but are also going to ask you for a snack yeah. in the gas station. Exactly. And that's another opportunity, like you're saying, of how do I show Jesus even through this frustration or you know all of those opportunities I think that's great Mm -hmm. so would you say as we are I guess making our way through life here on earth that's like our primary goal or question we can ask ourselves is how can I show Jesus as an ambassador to this world these people through my job all of that yeah I think so and I also think that we need to take Jesus's words very seriously when Jesus teaches us how to pray Mm -hmm. he says um on earth, the, the entire thing is framed this way, on earth as it is in heaven, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so the idea is that the kingdom of heaven is an actual kingdom with an actual king who sits on a throne, and this king and kingdom have actual people. And every king and every kingdom has ethics, values, systems. And the image that Jesus gives us is the image of the invasion, the... Um, the uh, the incoming of this kingdom onto earth as it is now. 